Welcome to SciTech Biosciences Full Spectrum Profiling Educational Series on Panel Design Best Practices. In this stepwise video series, we will walk you through the guidelines on successful panel design and assay optimization. In this video, we will talk about step three, spillover spreading error. When fluorochromes with overlapping emission are combined in the same panel, spillover spreading error, or spread, can be visualized in the data after compensation or spectral unmixing is applied. In this video, we will review examples of spread, show how spread is quantified, and review factors that impact spread. Let's start by reviewing a few examples to define spread and how it impacts antigen resolution. Looking at this published example, we can see how the resolution of CCR4 on BV650 is impacted by CD3 in three different fluorochromes. When there is a large amount of spread, the resolution of the CD3 CCR4 double positive population is severely impacted. When the spread of CD3 is minimal, the CD3 CCR4 double positive population is well resolved. We can make some predictions about spreading error between two fluorophores by comparing their signatures. Let's take PESI5 and APC as an example. These fluorochromes have unique emission spectra with a similarity value of 0.52. APC has very little secondary emission in the region where PESI5 has peak emission. We can quantify this at around 1% of the total APC signal. In contrast, in the region where APC has peak emission, PESI5 has a prominent secondary peak at 61% of its maximum. When unmixing is calculated, the signal from the PE Sci-5 positive events will contribute to the spread of the negative population on the APC axis. Conversely, APC positive events contribute minimal spread into PE Sci-5. Let's look at how the stain index can change depending on spread. Using BUV395 and APC as an example, there is no change in the stain index because they do not spread into each other. However, if PESI5 is used instead of BUV395, APC receives significant spread and its stain index is decreased. Now that we understand what spread is, how can we measure or quantify it to compare fluorochrome combinations? At SciTech, we use two calculations to understand the impact of spread, the stain index reduction, or SIR, and the spillover spreading value, or SSV. Let's use an example with two generic dyes, orange and green. When stained together, orange spreads into green, but green does not spread into orange. With SIR, we measure the reduction in the stain index of green when orange is used in the same assay. The readout for SIR is between 0 and 100%, indicating the relative amount of reduction in the stain index for a given floor when used in combination with others. For example, a SIR of 20% would indicate a low amount of spread, while a value of 80% would have a greater impact on the data. The stain index reduction is a very useful tool when considering fluorochrome choices in panel design. With SSV, we are measuring the distribution of our single stained orange sample into the green parameter relative to the negative population. We take the MFI and robust standard deviation of both populations into account to generate a value between zero and 20. Low values such as 1.5 represent little to no spread, while higher values like 9.8 indicate high spread. In addition to panel design, the SSV is also useful to compare how a dye pair performs between instruments. Let's use data from unmixed CD4 single stained samples to assess how spread correlates with SIR and SSV. Here, we can see how the resolution of APC changes when used with three different floors. 
With BUV395, the values for SIR and SSV are very low. With Alexaflor 647, the spread, SSV and SIR, are moderately higher. When using PE Psi 5, the spread and values are even greater. Lastly, let's cover factors that impact spread in a multicolor sample. We just saw how spectral overlap can be used to predict spread between two floors. Another consideration is that the spectral overlap can have an additive effect on spread, meaning that larger panels that include many highly overlapping floors have more potential for spread. The brightness of the impacting floor also contributes to spread. Here, seafloor B515 and Brilliant Blue 515 have almost identical normalized spectra, and the way they overlap with Spark Blue 550 is the same. However, because BB515 is brighter, it exhibits more spread into Spark Blue 550 than seafloor B515. The density of the antigen is the last factor that impacts spread. Here we can see CD4 PE Psi 5 has a continuous pattern of expression, with the dimmer population indicating monocytes and the brighter population indicating CD4 positive T cells. As the level of antigen density increases, so does the spread, resulting in a hallmark trumpet shape. In conclusion, it's important to consider spread and how it can impact antigen resolution in order to appropriately select fluorochromes for your panel. SIR and SSV are helpful metrics for quantifying spread. And we showed how several factors can impact the magnitude of spread between fluorochromes. This concludes Step 3 in our panel design series. In Step 4, we'll apply the concepts we've covered so far to design a multicolor panel. Visit SciTech's SpectraLearn educational portal to learn more on this and many other topics.